Oh boy, I'm ready for round two, baby. I hope everyone else is. Dungeon Masters of Reddit, who is the single worst player you have ever put up with? And what in-game consequences did they suffer, if any? Part two. The guy bugged us every session to join for a month. Despite us telling him we were not taking more players, we eventually have someone leave and for some reason decide he is going to take their place. He shows up to the first session without a character ready, takes forever getting it made, then does nothing once in game. The second session he just sits there on his laptop and seems to ignore the game. On my way back from the bathroom, I see his screen and the dude is just watching porn. I immediately kicked him out and told him not to come back. Edit. He just left in surprise when I told him to get out and approached me the next week to ask why I kicked him out. Just kind of looked upset and walked off when I told him. One of the people I gamed with in high school was the worst in my group's 20 years of existence. In one game, he played the most annoying gnome you can imagine, and he had a charisma of 18. So, as he put it, You have to like me. <laughs> no, not when you act like that, people don't. No matter how many times you insist we like your character, that character got crushed by a spiked wheel he was messing with, and we were all happy to see him go. He also was the worst kind of rules lawyer. He would argue endlessly about minor points, but be wrong the entire time. He tried to insist the escape artist skill could be used to run away from battles because it could make him escape artistically. I eventually gave up explaining it to him and had his character drown <laughs> when he failed the die roll escaping from a flooding cave system. Only one time that I'm aware of did a GM actually target him in a totally screw you fashion, and I wasn't running that game. It was a game of werewolf, and he decided to make the worst kind of munchkin character by trying to fast talk the GM into going with the character having multiple personalities, all of which was a different kind of werewolf so he could do anything he wanted. The GM finally got tired of arguing instead of starting the session, so he agreed to let him play his five characters in one rules violating Super Munchkin character. Two minutes into the game, a sniper shot him in the head with a silver bullet and killed him. Really, any player that has a chaotic evil protagonist it just doesn't work well, and a lot of the time, it's not fun for the other players. Chaotic Evil is a fun alignment, but it's not meant for a protagonist. I think a better way to go about being Chaotic Evil is to be more Chaotic Immoral. You don't have to go around raping and killing and stealing everything you see, but you merely act based off of self-interest, and you're willing to get your hands dirty. However, I suppose it might fall more into Chaotic Neutral, but I guess the best way to play Chaotic Evil is don't kill for no reason. Kill when it suits you, steal when it suits you, and be evil when it suits you. When playing Chaotic Evil, be unpredictable. You have to be dangerous. Someone who kills and steals everything they see is very predictable. Don't kill that cleric just because he won't sell you something for a low price. Manipulate him. Pretend to be his friend. Then, betray him when the time is just right. The thing about psychopaths is that they can turn their empathy on and off. They can simply choose not to care about people. Just like psychopaths, you've got to switch chaotic evil on and off, and only turn it on when it suits you. You've got to be evil and selfish about it too. Your character would trade the lives of a thousand people if it meant he got to live. Be subtle about your acts of evil. Don't be Ramsey Bolton, but more Roos Bolton. That's a Game of Thrones reference if you don't know. The biggest problem with playing chaotic evil is that in D&D, your actions have consequences. It's not a video game where you can just do whatever you want all willy-nilly. <laughs> My worst player was a DM I played with recently. Anytime a player had a misconception about a situation, he required the player to go through with it, even if it wasn't what the player meant, wasn't what the player or character wanted, and didn't make any sense. As an example, player is moving on a minimap. 
moves a character over a little symbol on the map. You just stopped on fire. You take damage. Ah, I didn't see the symbol. I didn't need to step there. I'll just uh, step around it. Too bad. Too late. Roll for fire damage. I wish I was joking, but he literally did this and it wasn't the worst thing he did. I call him a player because I and the other longtime DM at the table spent a good portion of our time quietly attempting to teach him how to be a less shitty DM without explicitly embarrassing him in front of the other players. Predictably, he ignored it. Also, his other friend was a cheating, IRL, whoring, IRL, murder hoboing in game of a half orc. Kind of both. Who I would have had thrown out of my table after five minutes, but that's another story. Wait, no, no, no. You can't leave it at that. We want to know about the murder horbo. <laughs> we need to know more about the murder horbo. What the fuck? Had a guy, we'll call him Chad. He thought he was better than everyone else. He kept making nasty comments about our house, which was just a typical lower middle class house, clean, etc. And it pushed me to where I told him to leave and not come back. He didn't come back. His buddy that had invited him to join us was so apologetic, he had no idea he was that much of a tool. Nobody suffers in-game consequences for bad behavior. I handle it all out of game and remove bad people from my social circle. I don't taint my game by punishing people. I tell them to stop, and if they don't, they're gone. Now, if you mean in-game because they do something stupid, that's fine. But I'm presuming you mean like player Chad keeps playing on his phone. So, in-game you kill his character or something like that. Personally, the worst was the player who clearly didn't care for how I was running the game. Anytime I tried to narrate something, he would interrupt with, Oh, my character's already gone. They're like a mile down the road. Would talk over the top of the table and generally try to ruin the game for everyone because he wasn't having fun. As a DM, he was equally bad, clearly considered all the players idiots, and didn't even attempt to do any world building. Literally said, you're in a village of Quest Hukistan. And that kind of thing. Generally impatient, rude, and just an absolute shithead. Easy fix by simply never playing with him again. But that said, I have a special contempt in my heart for the very nice, out of character, player of the lawful good cleric who, while the rest of the party robbed, lied, stole, and murdered right in front of him, never opened his mouth except to say, cast healing. A guy I played with a couple of times decided to try to be funny all the time, make lame jokes, and in general, fuck up everything for everyone else, while everyone else tried to stay true to the campaign and world. At some point, we had to tell him to take it seriously or fuck off. There's nothing wrong with a little humor, but this guy wasn't funny at all. All his jokes were lame, and he would just not shut up. My friend ran a game that was completely ruined by someone. We were all new to D&D and were trying it out for the first time, so we didn't 100% know the rules. And House ruled a couple of things just to make it easier and try to get the session to last less than five hours. This did not sit well with one of our group. He insisted on reading every single damn rule and making sure we were following it correct. If the DM gave us some info without a roll, he would perk up with, Well, actually... Then we had the infamous button room. There was a room with a pedestal and a button. We all entered and the door shut behind us. As it did that, the roof started to move down and the floor raised. We of course pushed the button and the trap reset and started over again. We look for exits thinking there's something hidden until I decide, fuck it, it's a trick room, let the roof close in. But this didn't seem to appease said player. He pressed the button like five times, even after we all agreed to play it out. DM straight out ignores his button presses as we've spent about 20 minutes longer than we should have in this room. This dude single-handedly ruined D&D for me. We weren't the best role players, but we wanted to have fun. Seemed this guy's idea of fun was the polar opposite to ours. If you're out there, anonymous poster, give it another try. Trust me, with the right people, it's actually a hell of a lot of fun. I've never had a worst player experience or played with any. 
Just the typical annoyances and somewhat stereotypes everyone deals with that can be bad or lame. Generally, I only play with friends who can hash stuff out if it becomes problematic. But there are templates people can fall into. The person who always has to have their kinks and fetishes in real life placed into their character. The guy who always jokes and tries to be wacky and wild. Which derails every quest and roleplay scenario because you have to tell them, don't because X, Y, and Z will happen. The close cousin to the one above who watches and listens to too many comedy type roleplaying podcasts or shows who think this campaign has to be like that. The one who always has to be the brooding lone wolf guy. For fuck's sake, Frank, just say you're coming and stop making 15 stealth checks to follow us hidden in the forest. The time waster, who when asks if he can do something and gets told no, tries for 10 minutes to get it to work, but in a slightly different way. The over planner, honestly though, this can be a lot of people. The human heartthrob. Every female is his lust ground. Mwah. The couple whose out of game drama is in. And lastly, the person who takes it way too seriously and gets pissy, ruining the atmosphere, sometimes for others. My friends, let me tell you about a dwarf named Twist. Twist wasn't exactly a bright dwarf. In fact, some would argue that Twist was one of the dimmest dwarf clerics to ever exist. Here are some of Twist's escapades. The adventuring party was lost, truly lost. So, Twist decided that he would speak with his god for advice on which way to go. He was instructed that he could only ask three yes or no questions. Which way? He began, but was immediately cut off. Yes or no questions. Also, that counted as one question. Should we go down this path? He's told the question is too vague to have a binary answer. Also, that was question two. Time passes while Twist ponders his final question. His face lights up and he proudly starts in a booming voice, Which way? And the entire adventuring party let out a collective groan. Eventually, it became time to explore a very narrow cave that was filled to the brim with hostile creatures. Twist refused to be put in the back of the party line because he was afraid he would miss out on some action. He argued with the fighter and barbarian that he should be positioned near the front, so we let him take the lead. Shortly thereafter, he got scared that he would be injured and not able to heal anyone, so he decided that he wanted to be in the middle, so we positioned him in the middle. Then he became concerned that he would miss out on the combat because he was in the middle, away from both rear attacks and front attacks, so he wanted to be in the back again. He raised another objection shortly thereafter, but the party told him to deal with it. Twist hated all gnome characters. Why? Because he encountered a gnome with a flintlock pistol once. He thought that flintlock pistols were abominations that went against the fabric of reality. And because there was one gnome that we encountered who possessed a flintlock pistol, he assumed that all gnomes possessed such technology, and would attack them on sight in order to destroy their wicked tech. This became an issue when he attacked the local gnome lord who was supposed to give us a mission. But there was one story that led to Twist's expulsion from the adventuring party. You see, Twist didn't really understand how magic worked. The party had to slay a dragon once, and Twist thought it would be a good idea to take the time to sneak around the dragon and lay glyphs of warding. The problem was this would take hours upon hours and assume that the dragon was stupid enough not to see a dwarf in heavy plate armor laying glyphs around his cave. When the half-orc barbarian, Feng, told the dwarf that this was a foolish plan, Twist told him that he would either lay the glyphs down or do nothing at all. The party agreed that the glyphs weren't going to work, so Twist sat at the cave entrance and refused to take part in the quest. Combat began and Twist was given multiple chances to do something, but he held his action at the cave entrance every time. Eventually, the halfling rogue, Liddy Tealeaf, was stunned and blasted out of the cave by a strong attack and began to fall to her certain death. The entrance was several meters high. Twist was given a specific opportunity to save the rogue, but intentionally chose to do nothing. The two looked each other eye to eye as she blew past him. 
Thing, reacting as quickly as possible, had to leap after Liddy instead and took the fall damage in his rage state. This left him near death and with a broken leg. Twist refused to heal him. Eventually, the rest of the party managed to slay the dragon and found a weeping halfling pleading with a stubborn dwarf to heal the dying barbarian. Twist said he would help if the party gave him some of the loot gathered from the dragon. This would be the last time the party adventured with Twist. Much later, the party was fighting Lilith, the Spider Queen. In the corner of the room lay a skeleton of a dwarf whose heavy armor had been cracked through by an enchanted flintlock pistol bullet. There was a shield next to the body with a spiral design on it. Some claimed that it had a twist design. The party has no idea if this was what remained of twist, but they assume it was. This was all based on an actual campaign. Thing the barbarian managed to recover and the kind halfling rogue decided to teach him how to read. He also purchased a garish helm with antlers on it so it would grant him featherfall. Hey everyone, Brian here. Just wanted to drop in at the end of the video to say hi and wish everyone well. Before heading off, I'd like to plug our friends over to Adventurer's Coffee Company again. Letting the world know that if you're hankering for a hot brew that you can use code Mr. Ripper to get a whopping 10% off their already reasonably priced bags of little roasted goodness. They come in pre-ground forms for us lazy folk, or thick beanie goodness if you prefer to crack and grind your own. You can find a link to their site down in the description below. Also, if you liked the video, then roll the dice and give us a big thumbs up and subscribe. And if you have a story you'd like to tell us, feel free to do so in the comments below. We're literally always reading them, and you never know if one of us will slap that puppy in a video. And as this video comes to a close, I want everyone to know that we're always happy to be here narrating for you through all these times of good and bad. So stay safe, be happy, and tune in again next time, everybody. Have a good one.